Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Good evening and thanks for joining us. We begin tonight with truckers across the country who are protesting a mandate that will require a two-week quarantine for unvaccinated drivers returning from the U.S. For more on the protest, here's Tate Laycraft. Hundreds of truckers hit the highways after gathering in Vancouver Sunday, assembling what's being labeled as a freedom convoy. The movement comes in response to a federal vaccine mandate for truck drivers. As of January 15th, all unvaccinated or single dose truckers are now required to isolate upon their return to the country for a period of 14 days. The convoy will travel from Vancouver to Ottawa over the course of seven days, but it's also inspiring other convoys, such as this one here, which will travel from Belayed Minster to Regina. The whole point to this is number one, to end the mandates for truckers. We need our truckers, our truckers need to roll. In a public statement posted to their website on Saturday, the Canadian Trucking Alliance condemned the protests, but for convoy supporters like Trevor Cappell, the message is clear. So this should be a choice, it should be everyone's choice. The mandate will impact roughly 10% of Canadian truckers, a reality which could lead to further supply chain woes. Yeah, they have to feed their families. I don't hold anyone, uh, don't wish any harm on anyone, don't judge anyone for doing it. Everyone has their own reasons. But yes, the, the truck, this trucking thing is a huge part of who we are, who my family is and the people around me. The Lloydminster-based convoy will make its way to Regina, while the larger Vancouver Ensemble will eye a date with Ottawa on January 29th. For Primetime Local News, I'm Tate Laycraft. The Lloydminster Museum and Archives hosted a blanket exercise Saturday to go along with the mo their most recent exhibit in hiding plain sight. Our Nicole Gruber has more. Debbie Semenuk and Hannah Littlechild led a Karyos blanket exercise over the weekend. This traditional exercise leads people through the history of colonization in Canada. A blanket exercise is an immersive experience where participants will learn about how colonization affected the peoples who are living on Turtle Islands, more commonly known as Canada today. People participating will explore the relationships between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people and how those relationships might have been damaged over the years. The blanket exercise is a really big eye-opening eye-opener for the true and I truly believe there cannot be reconciliation without first acknowledging the truth. Yeah. Semenuk feels the exercise can open up a lot of emotions for those who are involved. It can be triggering, so we like to remind people that we are in a safe place and this is where they can um, come to learn, ask questions, maybe talk about something on their mind or their heart. People have read the books or read the articles or seen the news, um, but to actually be standing there um, holding a baby doll and have that taken from them, I think that's one of the parts of the blanket exercise that definitely drives a lot of emotion. The museum hopes to do more in the future with both in-person and online options. For Primetime Local News, I'm Nicole Gruber. A week ago marked what would have been Betty White's 100th birthday, and in her honour, people were challenged to donate to animal-based charities. The event was a success, surpassing many expectations. Betty White was known for her support of animals and animal rights. The challenge asked people to donate $5 to a local animal shelter. Border City residents did not disappoint as over $20,000 was raised for Fur Babies Forever Homes and the Lloydminster and District SPCA. We had a, an insane, insanely good outcome. We raised just over $11,000, so that was beyond what we thought was going to happen. So. We're all just around here at the shelter, you know, Betty White did it again, you know, so, you know, she, she advocated for animals and we're really happy with our community and surrounding, surrounding communities that really, they really came through for us. We were all very surprised and happy to see that. The work that these two groups do are almost completely community funded. With the amount of support received from the challenge, this will set them up greatly to start off the year and the money will be used for a variety of things for the pets. Donations are going towards um, our continually growing vet bills, um, which can range each month, but thousands of dollars. Um, it also goes towards supplies used in our isolation building. So 
expendables such as food, um, paper towel, bleach, detergent, gloves, pee pads, garbage bags, all that type of stuff. And then it's also going towards any fees that arise um, during the rehabilitation process of these animals. Both organizations are very grateful for the community support during last week's challenge and throughout the year. If you want to donate to either of these groups, visit their Facebook pages for more information. It's time now for this week's Retrospect. Here's Blake Nath. This week in Retrospect. Back in 92, the local school board turns down a corporate deal for computer equipment. Our children, our future, now you can help them succeed by shopping at Superstore. This is the latest sales pitch from the Real Canadian Superstore. Families are encouraged to bring in grocery receipts to exchange them for points towards free computers to be given to local schools. It may sound okay, but the local school board has chosen not to participate. Our board feels that it's inappropriate for the schools um, to send 1,700 eager elementary students out to either to uh, badger parents or, or to solicit from neighbors and friends um, on behalf of a particular store. Superstore officials say they can't understand why the board would turn it down, saying the board has nothing to lose and the program is important for future education. If we're talking a basic requirement of education, that it certainly is appropriate for the funds to support that basic requirement to come from the tax base. It's much more reliable than depending on um, the occasional promotion that, that may come along. The Superstore proposal is also affecting school boards outside the city. The Vermilion River School Board received a copy, but it met with similar results. The County of Vermilion River School Board is backing local business and choosing not to go with the Superstore proposal. They say, thanks, but we're sticking with our own. And scrub-a-dub-dub. In 97, kids of the border city learn about proper hygiene and health from a traveling teacher slash musician. These young kids are already learning the basic rules of cleanliness. But a program in the Twin Rivers Health District plans to take children's health concepts to a whole new level. It's the Dr. Wellness Show. Through a one-hour musical presentation and also through su a supporting curriculum guide and a professionally recorded cassette tape, uh, they will, they'll try and teach the children about uh, nutrition, dental health, home and farm safety, uh, alcohol, uh, smoking, uh, fitness and exercise, and goal setting. Paul Runnels is the man behind the music and gets his inspiration firsthand. I get my ideas from um, uh, working with children because I'm, I'm a grade two teacher, so I, some of the inspiration for ideas comes from um, children, so I test songs out on them to see if they like them. And that's all for this week in Retrospect. Retrospect this week is brought to you by WebSport. Worth your while to drive the extra mile. Webb's Ford in Vermilion. Now Shelby Clark will get a first look at today's chilly temperatures. Thanks so much, Jasmine. Now taking a first look at your weather forecast. Hopefully everybody had a fantastic weekend, but here we are starting off this new week. Here in the border city, we are sitting at minus 15 with that wind chill. It does feel close to minus 20 right now. We are seeing a mix of some sun and cloud right now, and yesterday we saw a warmer day, but we have cooled down just a bit today, but later on throughout the week, we will warm back up. Switching over to temperatures across the region for Alberta and Saskatchewan. On the Alberta side, we're seeing a lot of uh, minus double digit temperatures here with uh, most seeing minus 14, minus 15, 
16 degrees, uh, minus 16 in Cold Lake, while Lacquabish is hitting minus 11. Edmonton is still at that single digit point at minus 7, minus 12 in Wayne White and Vagerville, while Provost is at that single digit point at minus 9 as well. Switching over to the Saskatchewan side here, they're seeing some slightly cooler temperatures compared to the Alberta side. Uh, up in Isle of Cross, they're even at minus 24 degrees, uh, minus 19 in most spots on the map on this side, minus 16 in Maidstone and Pearson, while there's minus 20 in Meadow Lake. Macklin is at minus 12 in North Battleford is just hitting that minus 18 mark. And for North Battleford overnight, they will be going down to a low of minus 30, so they will be cooling down quite a bit, uh, even without that wind chill. So make sure you are plugging in your vehicles if you are in North Battleford there, and they will be seeing some cloudier skies. And tomorrow, they'll warm right back up to minus 4 throughout the day with a little bit more cloud coverage. Switching over to Cold Lake, they'll be going down to a low of minus 23, so they will be cooling down quite a bit as well. They will be seeing a couple clouds in sight, and tomorrow they will be seeing a beautiful temperature with minus 1 throughout the day, so it will be a drastic change throughout the night into tomorrow morning, and they will be seeing a mix of some sun and cloud. And for here in the Border City, it will be going down to a low of minus 19, so we will cool down just a bit as well, but we will be hitting that zero mark there tomorrow throughout the day, so expect to warm up uh, starting in the morning tomorrow, and we will be seeing a nicer temperature than what we've been seeing throughout the day for the day today and now switching over to our three day forecast for here in the border city as I was saying we will be seeing a nicer day tomorrow there on Tuesday with a lot more cloud coverage Wednesday we will be seeing a nicer temperature as well with minus one but we will be seeing a 50% chance of some flurries and Thursday will cool down to minus five but we will still be seeing that single digit temperature that's a good look uh, first look at your weather forecast we'll have more coming up after the break The Lakeland Rustlers women's basketball team took on the Nate Ooks on Friday and Saturday. Our Thomas Wildman has more. The Lakeland Rustlers women's basketball team had an excellent start to their season as they have gone undefeated so far in the regular season. The Rustlers continued the success as they bested the Nate Ooks at home to a commanding 81-52 victory. Coach Chris King says the success of the team is due to great players, both young and old. We know this is a very talented team. Um, we have high expectations of this squad. Um, we're very veteran up front and as you guys saw tonight, very uh, young on the backside. So we're getting experience um, while we're you know, trying to get our legs under us like everyone else. Another key to the wrestler's success is Tori Dugan. Originally from Perth, Australia, Coach King says her team play is a huge part to her getting signed by a pro team back home. Tori is obviously a phenomenal player. Um, for the last three years, probably, if not the best player in the conference, one of the best players. So she really goes under the radar on the accolades just because she's such a good team player. And now that she's signed her pro contract, uh, it's nice to see her hard work getting rewarded. On Saturday, the wrestlers then went to Nate and got another victory, beating them 69-58. Thomas Wildman, Primetime, Local News. After earning buys through the NFL's wild card round of playoffs, the two top seeded teams have now been eliminated. So joining us to talk a little bit more about the playoffs is our sports reporter, Evan Kenny. Evan, it's great to have you here. So first of all, like I mentioned, the Titans and the pa Packers both have been eliminated. Which surprised you more? Yeah, Jace, uh, you know, pleasure to be to be joining uh, after an exciting weekend of football. Now, just talking about yep. these two top teams, uh, I think we all sort of knew going into the 49ers Green Bay Packers game, the 49ers defense always comes to play. We didn't know that their special teams would be quite so good. So I guess that's not quite as surprising uh, of a game, but the 19 to 16 win for the Cincinnati Bengals, in my opinion, is a little more surprising of an upset, uh, specifically because Jace, the Tennessee Titans did a fantastic job of getting through and getting to Joe Burrow. He was sacked for a playoff tying record uh, nine times during that game. However, he was able to just shrug those off and sort of regroup, reset himself. He still threw for almost 75% uh, completion rating, 28 for 37 and 348 yards, obviously, to lead his team to the win. So I think just being able to come back and persevere through all those hits, uh, the Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals definitely surprised me more. 
Now, uh, as we compare things to the wild card round, there's a lot of blowouts, some lopsided games. This week, things were a lot different. We had some really good football, really exciting. So all four games finished one score apart, including one game that needed overtime. That was a game between the Bills and Kansas City. Now, great game, great ending, but you didn't like exactly how this game ended. Kind of take us through that. No, Jace, I have no issues with uh, exactly the outcome of the game, as in the Kansas City Chiefs winning. Obviously, they had to grind back right at the end of the game and you know put their blood, sweat, and tears into that final crazy. handful of seconds just to push it to overtime. However, the part the part that I have a problem with, Jace, is just how NFL the NFL has their overtime situation. It's really the only major sport where both teams don't even have the opportunity to touch the ball or to have possession of the ball. It's almost not decided off of the coin toss, but the coin toss plays a lot bigger role than, in my opinion, uh, it should. For me, this is like as if in the NHL, if you had a shootout, but only one team was allowed to try and shoot and the other team just had to try to save it. Or in the MLB, if you went to extra innings and only one team got at bats, you know, Jace, even other football leagues within North America, the CFL or the NCAA, uh, both give chances to both teams uh, to try and score in the overtime. So I guess my issue is not necessarily that the Kansas City Chiefs did win in overtime. Uh, I guess just the fact that it did go to overtime and, and this setup for the NFL is definitely not my favorite. You're not mad they won, you're mad kind of how they won. Honestly, I'm with you there, Evan. You know, there's no other sport that you see it like this. You want to see both offenses have a chance to score. Sadly, this time we didn't. Still a great game, but definitely I think that's something the NFL needs to look at. Will they end up doing it? Probably not, but uh, we can still complain about it. Now that uh, we know what's going to happen, we know our matchups going into next week, uh, let's hear some predictions. So we obviously are going to have uh, Kansas City going up against Cincinnati and then the Rams against the Niners. Who do you got for both games? Well, Jace, my Super Bowl pick at the beginning of the NFL playoffs was the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, obviously, they're still around here. Like you mentioned, they're going to be taking on uh, the Bengals in the AFC Championship game. I'm going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, they are just filled with stars. It's star-studded from the top uh, to the bottom. And obviously, you know, they can do what it takes to win, as we just saw, uh, you know, in that overtime victory over the Bills. Um, if you are a Bengals fan, though, maybe this is good news. I haven't chosen them to win a single game of these playoffs thus far. And obviously, uh, they're still here to tell the tale of the playoffs. So maybe I'm just a, a good luck for them by not choosing them. I guess that would be the way you would put it. But maybe there that is the plus side for the Bengals in me not choosing them. Regardless, I'm choosing the Chiefs to be AFC champions. Uh, now in the NFC this is obviously such a close game. I mean, you look at these two teams obviously being in the same division. They play each other a lot, and they know each other very, very well. Uh, the San Francisco 49ers have had the numbers of the LA Rams, not just this season, but for the last number of seasons. Uh, the Rams haven't been able to beat the 49ers since 2018, so that is six straight victories for San Francisco. For me, Jace, this game really comes down to the matchup of Jalen Ramsey and Debo Samuel. Obviously, one of them being one of the best cornerbacks uh, in the league, and Debo Samuel being uh, the stud receiver for the 49ers. A lot of the offense and a lot of the big play offense is created through him. So, in my mind, whoever can win that matchup uh, really will win the game for their team. I am going to be going with the L.A. Rams uh, as the NFC champions. Jace, I know that I said that they haven't won against the 49ers in a while, but you just look at that roster, star-studded from the top to the bottom, both the offense and the defense. It is hard to choose against, so for that reason, I'm going to go with the Rams. All right, we got your picks down, and now all this is going to be taking place on Sunday, so the first game is going to be the Bengals and the Chiefs. That's taking place at 3 o'clock, and then the 49ers and Rams are going to be playing at 6.30. All of it comes down to this Sunday, so we'll see what ha happens. Evan, thanks for taking some time to talk with us today. Yeah, thank you, Jace. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. 
Joining us today for Primetime Local News is Canadian artist Danny Doucette, and we are here to speak about her new debut EP called Run With Me, and this was released on January 14th, so thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you so much, Shelby. It's so nice to talk to you today. <laughs> Of course, I'm glad that we're finally able to get you on here. Now, since this was released on the 14th, how has support been so far? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been getting a lot of people just reaching out and telling me uh, that they're connecting with the songs, which is the most important thing to me. Um, so, so far, so good. I'm really excited with it. Uh, and then obviously the next element will be the performance part of it, which when things start to opening, open up uh, here in Toronto, I can't wait to get back on stage and sing these songs to people in person, like how they're supposed to be. Now, how was the creation process with this and with everybody that you worked with? Um, honestly, I had the best time. Um, it was a fully immersive, very experimental time for me as well. Um, and also just like a lot of these songs have been kind of in the song bank for a long time. So um, having other people work on them with me and to bring them to life was a really, really great experience. I'm really lucky that I was working with a lot of amazing professionals. So that was wonderful. Is there a message you're hoping to send out for fans and people who listen to this debut EP? Yeah, this is kind of, this collection was very important for me to put out because it's kind of like a, a journal to myself. Some of the songs are very much like self-therapizing in a way. Uh, I don't know if that's a word, but it sounds good. <laughs> self-therapizing, um, where I'm talking about real stories about things that happened to me. I mean, all artists are inspired by, you know, what we see outside or, you know, personal events. Um, and some of them were very reflective. The song Post It was a lot about social media and about what you're putting out into the world. And if it's the things that you want to be putting to the, out to the world, 100% um, is very much about the message of being 100% yourself, um, loving yourself and um, never changing for anyone. Um, so there, every song is very much like, how I felt in the moment, and also a bit of a journal, so. Do you have anything that's in the works right now that people can know about? Can you give us a little teaser? Yeah, um, well, so the debut EP is now out. Um, I am planning something come this summer that I'm very excited about. Uh, it's gonna require a lot of planning. Um, I want to do a walking tour. And I know this was probably something you have never heard of, um, but since I was a little girl, I grew up in the country and I grew up with fields around me. And I always had this like desire to just run as far as I could across these fields and to cover great distance. So what I wanna do and in support of mental illness, um, I really want to raise money for mental illness because I feel like this whole last couple of years has really raised a lot of um, flags and, and just like caused a lot of awareness about how important um, mental health is. So uh, during this walking tour, I'm going to walk for an entire month, uh, 30 kilometers a day and cover Ottawa to London, Ontario. Um, and that's going to be my first year. So it's going to be me doing a walking tour of Run With Me for mental health. So that's something big that's in the works. Yeah. And yeah, that'll take up a lot of time. <laughs> oh, that's really great to hear. That's a great initiative that you're trying to take on. Is there a way that people can find some more information about this online or when you do post more information where they can look? Yeah, most definitely. Um, DannyDoucetteMusic.com. Um, most, most likely it'll all live there and all the information that um, uh, for that and where people can meet me on the, on the walk because this journey is going to be not only about me, but about everyone's journey. And um, I'm going to invite everyone to walk with me. So if I'm passing through your town, you can come see me. But yeah, that's, that's the big plan. Um, I also do have a single coming out in March, another song, uh, and this is a, a really cool house track that is releasing with Feels Like Records. Um, so if, if people have actually followed my music thus far, they'll know that I really like to incorporate some house EDM stuff in there too, so. Perfect. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us today, Danny, and good luck on this future walk that you're planning to do for mental health, and hopefully you get some more strong support with this debut EP. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I, come on. Things open up. Let's get on stage. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on Primetime Local News this hour. And if you missed any news, you could catch it again at 6 p.m.